kill myself with this thing. Heaven. Oh, here we go. Hey, all right, just gotta stop. Oh, <laughs> I was really trying to do it. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Hey, welcome to the closing beat. How are we doing today? Get out of the way. Just uh, risking my life here. Happy Wednesday, everybody. How's it going today? Hope you're doing well. Uh, special recorded edition here today, although it's just a little bit delayed. Uh, we're going to be going out of town for the next two days, taking the office up to Blue Ridge, Georgia for a little uh, office retreat slash Mother's Day getaway. So um, won't be any show tomorrow or Friday, but you know I'll be watching. Maybe if we're up there and we take like the cameras, we could do a little something, but uh, we'll see. I appreciate you guys joining us here for today. We talk about the stock market, all that good stuff, and uh, usually don't risk our lives, but we were having a little fun with that here earlier today. Uh, let's take a look at the stock market, see what's going on here today. Kind of a mixed bag. I, You know, not much to get real excited about. If you go over to the stock market, I'm going to start with the NASDAQ here because the NASDAQ is really struggling. You don't like the showing that you had today if you're a NASDAQ investor. Uh, struggling today because you had an early rally. So if we look at the sort of performance throughout the day, we had that early sell-off. Markets basically get open, get going and everything, and attempted to recover, really trying to go back positive for the day, but then just all day just got beaten down. So if you're looking at an intraday chart, that's what you see. If you look at a daily chart, unfortunately, you see the same thing. It's just not ready to bounce in here. The tech stock still got you hit today. Uh, point out that T-Mobile... Uh, T-Mobile actually did their part. It's the biggest contributor on the day. Got an earnings beat, handful of upgrades there. Trying to get to new highs, breaking out of this range. Uh, it's been a little bit, right? So if it could get that done, you know that gets some attention uh, from some of the traders out there that are looking for that breakout. Amazon continued to pull back. Uh, that sucks. Nearing 10% as far as the pullback from the highs there. So from here to here, which the highs are just equal to the same range that it's been in. Not a whole lot going on there. Um, if we look at Facebook, that was also weak on the day. This has been weak all week, actually. Microsoft, same story there. Uh, Tesla, oh, no, no. Tesla continues to pull back ever so slightly there. Uh, they basically all just continue to take the hit from yesterday. That's what we've got going on in the old NASDAQ there. If we go over to the Dow here today, it held up the best uh, thanks to financials, right? So financials continue to do their thing there. Uh, it was the uh, Dow was the best index here today. And if you look inside of it, uh, let's go JP Morgan. There you go. JP Morgan, a good day. Financials have had a good week, actually. And if we're digging around, look at Goldman Sachs, back to new highs there at another two and a quarter percent on the day. Uh, the downside there, you got Boeing down 2.3%. Visa continuing to pull back. It's been a good move, but just pulling back a little bit. And um, what was the other one? Salesforce.com. Uh, still in that downtrend. We highlighted that yesterday. That one continues to be the drag there. Also, what was strong, United Healthcare largely took a break. I mean, it was still positive on the day, but it largely took a break from its really strong rally to start the week there. So we didn't have that normal support that we'd had uh, that we've been seeing this week so far. Uh, nonetheless, the Dow's still up about 12% year to date, still remains in this tight range. It is the tightest of all of the indices out there. Not horrible, but still losing a little momentum. And I'll take you back to the conversation yesterday, the catalyst. What's the catalyst to get us going there? I don't, I don't see it yet. So uh, with that in mind, you look at the Russell 2000 small caps today, uh, particularly small cap growth stocks, they were hit the hardest. The index was down about a quarter of a percent um, it, for the day. Um, it's kind of weird because if you look here, the end of last year into the beginning of this year, this year, we started off with that 20% rally. Small caps were where it's at. It was all exciting there. But in the last one month, we just go back here and go, well, let's see, about one month ago, it's uh, basically down 1%, less than 1% in one month. So a whole lot of nothing going on in the Russell, but that small cap growth is getting hit. So that could start to pull the Russell back a little bit. Uh, S&P was the best performer over the last month, speaking of the last month there, uh, but it's been flat recently. So the last month, you got decent gains there, everything looking good. And then just the last week and a half or so, just not a whole lot going on. I pointed it out in our notes from Jazz email, how we had all these earnings come out from the big names, the big weighted stocks in the S&P. That's basically done and over with. And the uh, the S&P basically did nothing. Since last week, at this time, it is flat. It's lost 0.35%, which we would just call that flat. And you can't blame that on energy. So I'll go over to the sector breakdown. We'll talk about energy here real quick. That's a nice transition. We look at energy. XLE is a ticker symbol I'll use today. It's sitting at about 5% gains over the last five days. Quick math tells you it's about 1% a day that energy has been able to uh, give you there. A lot of it due to oil. Oil took a break today, but largely because of that rally in oil there. It's almost back to uh, energy, by the way. No, that's not what I typed. 
There's a little bug in there. Um, Energy is almost back up to that 40% gain year to date. Uh, some of the best performers this year have been Marathon Oil. Fang has been one of the bigger gainers. Remember in my New Year's resolution email or New Year's prediction uh, video that we did, I said Diamondback Energy. I like that one there. It's the biggest gain, one of the biggest gainers so far. 74% uh, there for the year. Even the weakest stock in the XLE is still up 7% year to date. Not one single stock in the energy sector is down year to date there. Energy's been really one of those underrated, uh, well, I'll say underreported areas there. If you were to look at something like an ARC, ARC Investment, they get all the energy. It's like, yeah, that's great. Lots of volatility and they have performed, outperformed energy in the long run. But this year, energy is beating the ARC Investment Fund by 50%. Right, so energy is up about 40. Arc is down about 10, 50% spread there. Uh, so I'm not saying that that's something you would choose. I'm just saying, look elsewhere. Sometimes, you know, look to see under the surface what people aren't talking about. You find a lot of good stuff there. All right, going back to the sector breakdown, you got materials. They were uh, well, materials and financials were basically the leaders again. What's been strong this week continues this week. That's basically the way to look at it. If you look inside of basic materials, not the most exciting area, but remember you learned yesterday that Lind L I N makes up 15% of the sector. And it had another great day, reversing all of yesterday's losses and then some. And then you have the same names. Freeport McMoran, FCX, doing really well. New 52-week highs there. New core, NUE. I, like I said, I was just telling a client the other day, they wanted to sell it. And I was like, wait, wait, you know, you, you may see this thing over $100 in a not too distant future. It's a lot faster than I would have thought there. So new core uh, rapidly approaching the $100 mark. You got Albermail also had a good day, uh, 3%. Uh, yeah, 3% on the day uh, for Albermail. Still the biggest gainers there. They're all, I mean, I would say uh, Nucor is getting a little extended now, so maybe maybe something not to chase. But uh, basic materials there now up over 20% year to date. If we go and look at some of the other sectors there. Uh, financials, I mentioned a second ago, also continuing with its rally. Second best performer year to date uh, today was mostly a broad rally, I would say, because the big banks like JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America all did well today. Your big money center type banks there. Even Wells Fargo had a good day. Uh, half a percent gain, not too bad there. Um, I would note that some of the exchanges held you back. S&P Global, SPGI down one and a quarter percent. Uh, market access, we talk about that as being an exchange. Breaking down today, kind of a cool looking pullback shaping up there. And Moody's also pulling back just a little bit. So it just kind of noted that that area didn't hold up today. Uh, you've got uh, real estate and utilities, your worst performing sectors on the day. Real estate's really just seeing kind of a a profit taking pullback. That's all I would think this is. Um, you got rates basically stable. Janet Yellen walked back everything she said yesterday. Everybody pretty much, well, most of the Fed members saying we're good for now. We're going to need to see actual data before we start raising rates or tapering our bond purchases. Nonetheless, you got a little profit taking going on there. Um, utilities got this pullback, I believe, because of the, uh, the whole Biden uh, green approach with the vehicles and make them all electric and uh, obviously what's going what's been proposed and everything so i think that's a little bit there people saying i don't know with with rates potentially rising uncertainty there we got a lot of stuff moving towards that green energy not sure that that means good things for traditional utilities and so uh, that was the worst performing sector of the day if we go to new highs and new lows for the day what do we have uh i think what like 80 something of them 86 new highs on the day and uh, financials had the most of the stock uh, names on the 52 week high list. But if you're looking around, you got Under Armour breaking out there. Uh, nice strong move to new highs. That's also a fresh technical breakout, which makes it a, uh, gives it an extra point there. Uh, Newell Rubbermaid, you know who they are. Uh, so this is that breakout from, uh, from about a week ago, actually. A little less than a week. That's continuing just consistently. That's what I like to see. I don't like the new core stuff so much, where or even like Dogecoin. You don't like to see things just tear off like a rocket ship, like this right here, just this nice consistent. That can keep up. Look what happened before. Not too crazy. That can keep going. Add you a little 10, 20% move there. So we'll see what happens there. Now, new core also hit new highs, like I mentioned. It's just extended. So now you're looking at this like maybe a UPS. Uh, UP. <laughs> UPS, there you go. So I actually uh, sold the 210 calls just a little bit prematurely, obviously, uh, but still that one hold, now starting to say we're too extended. Maybe this pulls back. So I'm hoping for good things there, but that did hit 15 to two week highs as well. And then Caterpillar, just thought that was a cool breakout. We've looked at this one a couple times, finally breaking out here uh, with a little more convincing volume, a little bit more of a convincing day. And those are your new highs of the day. 
Stocks in the news. That, there was actually quite a bit going on out there. You had Lyft. It's not coming up. L-Y-F-T. There you go. So Lyft selling off today. Uber reported after hours here. 6.3% to the downside. Uh, loss was less than expected. Can't blame them there. Revenues came in a little bit better than expected. Uh, riders up and everything. I'm not I'm not disappointed there. Remember, they lose money, so it's a tough one there. And Uber basically moving on from the autonomous driving thing and everything. So that's coming out as we're this, you're watching this now. Um, but still, rough day for Lyft. That one's in the news because of earnings. Match.com was also earnings. Uh, they did beat. They raised their guidance going forward as well. Stock ends up about 3.5% today. It was a volatile day. It's also known for being one of the more volatile stocks on earnings. They lived up to their names here today. Um, what else did I have for you extra on Match.com? Free cash flows up over 40% for the quarter, and they beat their subscriber count by 12%. Uh, year over year. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, Activision Blizzard also in the news. They reported earnings. I believe they beat on earnings as well, up about a percent and a half. Um, kind of an interesting one here. So Call of Duty is, there's three segments, right? There's Activision, there's King, and there's Blizzard. So Activision Blizzard, King. That's how this works. Um, Activision is Call of Duty. So if you're looking at something like that, monthly active users for uh, mainly because of Call of Duty, up 50%. So right away I read that and I'm like, okay, I gotta look further here because I know Activision, uh, that division is like half of their overall uh, revenues for the year. So half the business essentially comes from Call of Duty there. Um, so it's a good thing that obviously those were up there. Blizzard, uh, that division, which is like more PC gaming, uh, Overwatch League, if you're familiar with that there, um, that one uh, was about 23% of their revenue. They had a weak quarter. King also had a weak quarter as well. You probably recognize some of the King names down 5% uh, actually for that quarter. Now, one thing that stuck out to me was, and maybe this is partly why the stock sold off here. We'll go back to the charts. All right, what is that? Stocks in the news. Um, profit margins tightened up. You would think that if there's more users, 50% more users, that profit margins would stay steady or be good. Uh, well, actually, if you read a little bit deeper there, when I noticed profit margins got tighter, I looked into it. They had tons of monthly active users and their margins tightened. That's because Call of Duty and some of their mobile games were actually free to play. So that's why there were more monthly active users. Didn't generate extra revenue there. And I think that's going to hurt them a little bit as people look a little bit deeper, uh, maybe into what's going on there. So uh, we'll see. Just a little bit more details there for a stock uh, to report earnings for you. All right, New York Times, uh, good sell-off today, a little bit, uh, I would say, extended, climactic, parabolic to the downside, three and a quarter, three quarters percent on the way down there. Um, there I'm really just interested in ad revenue when I look at things like this, uh, beat by 11%. The problem is they basically admitted that they're losing subscribers now that Trump's not the president. So they, they were a uh, huge benefit to that. Uh, and they said, uh, they said, we're gonna have to guide lower uh, what'd they say? We, we're only going to see moderate growth uh, basically as subs, uh, subscribers from the Trump years start to leave little by little. So they're losing those subscribers. That's why they weren't that positive. It's obviously going to hit the stock, right? There's something there. Office Depot. Yeah, they're still public. Office Depot is going to be buying back $300 million worth of shares. They beat on earnings and they're going to spin off their B2B business. That's a big deal. B2B business, uh, which is like selling Office Depot branded products to other uh, businesses. You see the trucks driving around and stuff. That has now ramped up to 50% of Office Depot's sales, right? Why is the stock up 8.7% today? Call it 9%. Because B2B is where the money's at. They're gonna spin that off into a separate brand. Remember uh, last year or the year before, Staples wanted to buy Office Depot for that very reason. And they said, no, we're not gonna sell the business. They didn't sell to Staples. But now they're gonna spin off the B2B business, and they're going to leave the retail business. I'll bet you they let Staples buy that last chunk there, but we don't want any part of that because the money's over here. So that's going to be spun off there. If you happen to own it, that's something you need to know there, in my humble opinion. Uh, and what else do we have here? Denny's. I actually like looking at Denny's earnings here. I'm a, kind of a Denny's fan. You go to Denny's often? Grand Slam. That's where it's at. Yeah. yeah. All right. I used to go there all the time. So Denny's has got a little place in my heart. When earnings come out, I'm pretty interested there. I always listen to what the president of the company says. Uh, he's the one that's the most specific there. And uh, so th here's the thing with Denny's. They need to hire 20,000 people, but they can't do it. They tried to hire 20,000 people. They cannot hire that many people. So they hire an outside team to start a whole campaign, job fairs, career fairs, websites, link up with all the other job providers out there. They need 20,000 people. They can't get it. Um, they also said that they're going to focus on opening more stores in the conversion format. So what they're doing 
you know, the president was saying like, oh, you know, it's sort of sad that, you know, companies are shutting down and all that. But that means there's open retail space. What they like to do is go into those open retail spaces, refurbish it, franchise it out. That's how they make the most of their money. It's 60% less costly for them to do that. So if you ever notice a weird looking Denny's, that's what they're doing. It's just a lot cheaper for them to do there. So um, I don't know. It's probably not interesting to everybody. Who owns Denny's, right? Like, do you look out to buy Denny's? I just I always find that when they come up with earnings, I, I just like to take a look. Hey, and Peloton. Yeah, we got to mention Peloton. Falls 15% today. That's a bad day. Notice the volume. So that's 15% of people, not like me and you. Those are funds giving up on the stock that would have normally held it. Today, the volume traded at 84 million shares. They didn't sell more shares yet. They haven't done anything. All they had to do was recall 226,000 treadmills, which when you look at the treadmill, have you seen this treadmill? So kind of wonder how this passed. The, the belt goes, you know, there's normally a belt. It's a different kind of a belt, but it goes around and the bottom like a normal treadmill, but that part's exposed. They chose not to cover that up. So the issue is kids are playing, mom and dad are running, kid gets their head stuck under the belt, gets sucked up underneath the thing. You got one person dead, tons of people hurt, dogs are getting sucked up underneath the thing, you know, cats, woo, just. So they're like, okay, initially they said, we're not going to recall them. People need to figure out how to use these machines. Just stay away from it. Put a cone up, you know. And then uh, I forget what the organization is that, that looks at that, the Consumer to, uh, Bureau or whatever. They said, uh, you know, you should recall these. They said, we're not going to recall them. They came out today and said, we made a mistake. We should have recalled these things. We're super sorry about this. Totally our fault. We're recalling every single one of them. Wow. Yeah. That's going to hurt a little bit. Those are not cheap treadmills. So they said, basically, just give us a call. We'll figure out something. We'll give you parts. We'll take it back. We'll give you a refund, whatever. That hurts. That is not a reason to decide to just all of a sudden go, that's a discount. I think I'll buy the stock. No, no. No, there's going to be some time spent down here. It's an $82 stock. It's going to just give them a little bit, right? Let them, let them uh, work this thing out. All right. Uh, coming up tomorrow, you've got Square Earnings, Con Edison, be an interesting one there. Wayfair charges way too much for their stuff. Um, Azul, right, from JetBlue. Viacom, oh, God. Uh, Norfolk Southern's paying out 99 cents in dividends, Walmart 55 cents, Pfizer 39 cents, Intel 35 cents, and JB Hunt 30 cents. And that's basically it. Hopefully you learned something there. We're going to wrap it up and uh, get this thing posted for you. I appreciate you watching and we'll be back on Monday. So no show tomorrow or Friday in the traditional sense. Maybe we try something in the mountains. I don't know. Not promising anything. But uh, hey, have a great weekend and all the mothers out there. Of course, I won't talk to you. Have a happy Mother's Day. Take a break for a change. You know what I mean? Sit back and relax. Mm -hmm.